everyone. Welcome to the IIBA podcast series. My name is Amy Riddell and I'll be your host today. Today's topic is cybersecurity analysis and our guest is Holly Van Helden. Let me tell you a little bit about Holly. Holly is a professional industrial engineer, certified business analyst professional, certified change management professional, with over 20 years experience driving process improvement and delivering business solutions across a variety of industries, including IT, healthcare, government, utilities, and higher education. Holly's unique blend of skills and experience allows her to bring a range of effective analytical tools and methodologies to every new assignment and team, drawing from successful application of requirements and test analysis, service design and operational planning, business process modeling, facilitation, measurement and improvement, both within agile and waterfall project settings. Holly has an ISO 27001 information security management system certification under her belt and is considered a cybersecurity analysis professional specialist. Holly has a knack for quickly building rapport with stakeholders, enabling her to develop a thorough and relevant understanding of the business processes under review and to build trust with clients to maximize engagement and effectiveness. Holly is a detailed analyst with big picture perspective which allows her to connect operational and operational analysis to strategic objectives, thus producing aligned and clear results. Welcome, Holly. Hi, Amy. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for being here. So let's jump into this because this is a very exciting topic. Mm -hmm. What advice can you provide to business analyst uh, professionals wanting to get into cybersecurity? Okay, um, so for those working in organizations with a cybersecurity program already in place who would like to support existing internal efforts in cybersecurity, what I would say is to express your interest to your leader and look for ways to find out about the work that's happening and how you might be able to support it, even in small pieces. So try to learn about the technologies that are being implemented read reports coming out of the program, research industry specific best practices, and talk to the cybersecurity professionals in your organization to see if there are maybe some gaps that you might be able to fill and, and just help them out and trying to get, get to know them a little bit. So if your organization doesn't have any cybersecurity infrastructure in place yet, or it's just beginning, I would take that as your opportunity to carve out a role for yourself as a subject matter expert. So use your business case development and best practice and research skills to make a case for cybersecurity and present it to key technology leadership. Now, chances are they're keenly aware of the need to establish governance and implement some security measures. And they just might jump at the opportunity that you're presenting to them to lead the way. So you could start maybe by developing some requirements, some high level requirements around cybersecurity. Um, you could go and look for some cybersecurity standards that are out there readily available, some frameworks, um, look up some information security management systems uh, to present to them for consideration. And you might even be able to identify some quick wins in terms of uh, technology. Now, if you enjoy the flexibility and autonomy of consulting, um, I don't think finding an opportunity to provide security analysis services would be difficult. The key here is becoming qualified and experienced enough to fill the highly sought after demand. But as we all know, it's tough to get that first gig and gain experience without already having some experience. So to start from the beginning, I would say learn as much as you can about the subject, find ways to demonstrate and apply your knowledge on current engagements, and consider the advice that I gave earlier for those working in the staff positions. But above all, for any BA, regardless of your current situation, if you want to get into cybersecurity, I would say earn a credential, such as the new uh, certificate in cybersecurity analysis, attend conferences, follow blogs, and engage with colleagues who are out there blazing the trail and don't stop asking questions. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, can you explain what the difference is between a core BA 
and a cybersecurity BA. Are they the same? Um, so I would consider a core BA as a practicing professional with some level of certification, but not necessarily, um, who has experience in all of the, the knowledge areas that you would find in the BA box, and who has a good repertoire of tools and tactics and really knows how and when to use them. Um, a core BA, I would think of someone who demonstrates a well-rounded foundation of the core competencies. Um, but then I would say a cybersecurity BA not only possess all of those core BA capabilities that I talked about, but would also possess the foundational cybersecurity technical base, um, which would enable them to perform just as competent and comfortably in this space as uh, a core BA would in, in any other sort of traditional setting. Okay, um, thank you. How can an operational BA get more experience in cybersecurity? Okay, so yeah, as sort of I alluded to earlier, to get experience, it helps a lot to understand the subject matter. Uh, and more specifically, to understand the business analysis perspective, cybersecurity and application of cybersecurity um, in sort of the, I guess, the context of a BA. So this, for some people, this might require individual learning, such as the methods that I talked about earlier. Um, but I can tell you in my own experience, uh, I was brought into a cybersecurity program team as a seasoned BA, but I had zero cyber experience. So what I did is I just kind of learned what I needed to know as I went along and just constantly asking questions and researching and just deepening my understanding um, and looking for technical explanations along the way, relying on my peers and just not being afraid to ask for help. Excellent, thank you. Um, how, how can a functional BA equip themselves to speak the right language in order to connect with a security SME? Yeah, um, so security professionals, you know, they're, they're not only technical, but I find cybersecurity is just, you know, a few notches up the scale in terms of, of technical language. So, so again, I would say learn the content. Um, there's, you know, an unlimited supply of resources out there that, that you can just, you know, Google, um, there's, there's books, there's textbooks, there's all kinds of things out there. You could find case studies or operational reports. You could read white papers, again, attend security conferences. You could research technology solutions. Um, the cybersecurity analysis e-learning course that I mentioned has a ton of relevant information all in one place. So, um, so that's a great resource uh, that is comprised of both e-learning modules as well as a sort of a knowledge document. Um, see if you can get your hands on an enterprise or solution security architecture diagram. So if you're in your company, you have access to such documentation um, and you kind of understand what's happening in your business and the architecture diagrams would make sense to you, then that's a good way to kind of um, put some familiar context to the, the technical information that you're, that you're learning. And, uh, and you can always go and talk to the, to the SMEs in your organization and ask them to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like anytime we as BAs are seeking insight, it's important to know your audience and figure out how to meet them where they're where they are. Okay, thank you. You had mentioned earlier about researching and attending conferences, e-learning. Um, so carrying on from that, what skills, both hard and soft, mm -hmm. are important to have to transition into a more cyber a cybersecurity focused role? Okay. Um, I would say with the hard skills, so it's really important to have a really solid understanding of information technology. I know that a lot of BAs work in IT, but there are some out there who 
who don't or they're brand new to IT. So um, getting a really good handle on IT is important um, as well as understanding standards and compliance and, and regulatory bodies and, and requirements and things like that. Um, risk analysis and management is, is very important when you're looking at cybersecurity. Business case development is a good, a good uh, tool to have. And of course, requirements uh, pretty well. Any, anywhere we want to work, we want to know what we're doing when it comes to requirement solicitation and, and validation. Solution design and development, it's really good to have an understanding of that. Process analysis, um, design, and uh, like just you know, business process development in general. Uh, and systems thinking is important. It's good to have, be able to step back and look at your organization as a whole in terms of uh, cybersecurity requirements. So, and then in terms of soft skills, um, I think a lot of BAs have, have common strengths when it comes to soft skills, but to call out a few, I would say communication is, is hugely critical. So being able to really listen and and hear and understand what what your clients are telling you and then the other side of that communication is writing understandable documentation so in a few of my projects you know it it fell on me to really try to grasp what the cybersecurity professional was explaining but then tr being able to write that down in documentation that the business could really understand um, Relationship building is very important. Uh, stakeholder engagement, and just being flexible, adaptable, and and agile is is really critical because, you know, cybersecurity and the need for cybersecurity is is driven by advancements in in technology that are happening on a daily basis. So things change every day in this in this environment. So. Uh, being able to to adapt and and go with the flow is really important. So that would be a, a few key ones that I would mention. No, that's excellent. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, so back to the career itself. What approaches can a BA provide to address internal cyber threats? Okay. Um. I th I think if if I'm understanding the question, it's it's more from an internal, you know, position. If there's a BA working internally, yes. what are some things that you that a BA could do to kind of affect um, initiatives and programs that are happening? So really, BAs can add a role and add value at at many levels of the organization uh, in terms of security efforts. So we can contribute to establishing. Um, information security management systems. So the ISO 27001 that we talked about earlier, that's a, that's a really popular example. Uh, we can get involved in that. Um, identifying and implementing governance frameworks, uh, assisting with security threat and risk assessments. So those occur at organization levels and also at the technical solution level. Um, developing business cases, use cases, eliciting security requirements, analyzing related business processes. Um, we're also in an ideal position to leverage our relationships throughout the business to increase security awareness and act as sort of a, if you want to say a security ambassador on behalf of the cybersecurity professionals to the rest of the business. So. Again, drawing on that, you know, the BA's ability to, to find common language that's more accessible to the business and understandable to them than what, you know, a highly skilled and technical cybersecurity professional do. Okay, thank you. Um, in your opinion, should organizations start developing cybersecurity BAs? Absolutely. Yes, without question. So, I think anyone listening will understand the important role that business analysis fulfills in any organization in whatever form that may take. 
And any business that relies on information technology must establish a security posture to survive today, let alone stay competitive, prosper and grow. So when you put the two together, you can very quickly see how cybersecurity business analysis will continue to be essential. So yes. <laughs> I thought you might say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A bit biased, but yeah. <laughs> Are there materials available to augment a business analysis professional's knowledge in the area of cybersecurity? I think you touched on this uh, briefly off the top. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so the IIBA, in partnership with IEEE Computer Society, um, they just recently, I think within the last couple of weeks, launched um, a, a new professional certification in cybersecurity analysis. So it was actually developed especially for practicing BAs wanting to enter the field of cybersecurity. So um, the material that's been developed for, for candidates who are interested in, in going for the certification, uh, it includes a complete courseware of um, the self-directed e-learning um, learning modules, as well as, uh, like I said earlier, the, the body of knowledge. So it's basically all of the written content that you'll see when you're sitting through the e-learning e modules is in one document for just for easy reference. It's all in one place. Um, so, you know, listeners can just go to iiba.org slash cybersecurity and you can get all the information that you need about the learning modules. Um, and then while you're there, IIBA, they also have white papers, articles, interviews um, on this topic. And in, like I said before, there's no shortage of technical resources available online. Um, in terms of augmenting knowledge, uh, you know, the, you might find uh, more customized one-on-one -on -one coaching. So uh, if your organization or yourself requires some more support, um, you know, you could look for uh, some cybersecurity um, business analysis consulting. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's just kind of the main, the main couple of things that I can think of. Excellent. Can you um, can you give the web address again for the IIBA with the, uh, the information? Sure. It's iiba.org forward slash cybersecurity. Excellent. Thank you. Um, also, are there any particular tools you'd recommend that cyber cybersecurity analysis professionals should use? Right. And um, so the way that I consider cybersecurity analysis in terms of tools is really no different than what a core BA would use, you know, would go to in their toolkit. So now this focus area is a little bit different from other business analysis augmentations like uh, the BA Agile extension, which came out, I think within the last year or so. Um, so in that case, there are sort of new specialized practical tools that have been designed specifically for application in um, agile focused endeavors. Whereas with cybersecurity analysis, you're really just accessing your, you know, your tried and true tools that, that you use every day um, and, and the techniques that you're used to while armed with the technical subject matter context to enable you to to uh, be effective in this role. So having said that though, in my own personal experience uh, for the past four years or so working in cybersecurity, some of the go-tos um, that I rely on, again, so security re requirements analysis, uh, use cases and scenarios, uh, workshop facilitation, use that all the time, uh, the business process design and documentation, um, process and gap analysis is a huge one. Um, using roles and permissions matrices comes in use all the time because you're looking at um, access controls and things like that. Mm -hmm. Again, risk analysis and mitigation, um, asking the five whys. So 
or the fault tree analysis. So that that's important when you know you're trying to really get to the to the root of why something needs to be a requirement or or understanding the sort of the the relative impact to something to to the rest of the business. Okay. All right, we are at our last question. Okay. And this is more about you. Okay. Was, yeah. <laughs> what was what is your role in developing the cybersecurity analysis e-learning materials with um, the IIBA and the IEEE Computer Society? Oh, yes. Okay. So, um my role, I guess I'll I'll go back and and just sort of set the set the context here. So I think being part of the, the project from the beginning gave me a really good foundation for developing the learning module content. So I started uh, when we were establishing the course outline, uh, the domains of knowledge, and then the learning outcomes, um, and then participating in the practice analysis really shaped the context for what, uh, for what was important to convey to learners. So that included defining the core competencies, um, the knowledge and task capabilities, and the proficiency levels. Um, so the next significant piece of work for me was then uh, taking those knowledge areas and setting out the specific topics for each of the modules to be developed within each knowledge domain, um, just to make sure that we would kind of achieve the required coverage for the course material. So um, then the development of the module content itself could begin. And this is where we engaged our volunteer colleagues to kind of distribute this workload. So, um, and, and the other good thing with that one is it really brought a uh, diverse and more expansive, I guess, combined expertise to the overall content. Um, okay, so we ended up developing 67 different uh, individual learning modules, and they then each needed to be brought to life in some in some way. So we knew that we wanted to use e-learning, self-directed learning, um, but we didn't want to just offer you know a PowerPoint slide that that learners would click through. So we wanted to bring them to the life in some way. So this we decided to do uh, just some voice scripting. So um, you know, I was involved in that and, and also pulled in some volunteers to help me write some sort of context setting uh, voiceovers and, and a, a short video in the beginning of each module to, to set the stage and, and sort of set the learners up for, for what they should pay attention in, the, in this next module. Um, and then uh, from there, I was given a crash course in recording, I guess you could call them film selfies. <laughs> so yeah. here in my living room, um, you know, I, I got some gear and set it up. And then I basically just created these multimedia modules um, that were made up of the, uh, the I guess, the, the, the slides, like the visual part of it. Um, uh -huh. And then sort of my voice over, over top of it with a little video in the front to kind of kick off the topic. And that's that's where we are today. Well, that's awesome. Well, that and that is all the time we actually have for today. I know there's probably hours more that we could talk about. If anybody has questions for you or wants to contact you directly, Holly, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, I would say just find me on LinkedIn is probably the the most reliable way. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll spell your name quickly for everybody. I'm sure it's right there on the site, but it's Holly, D-A-N-H-E-L-D-N. D-E-N, yep. D-E-N, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Holly, on behalf of uh, the team over here at um, FBA Times and on behalf of the IIBA, of course, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Amy. It was a, it was a pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you very, very much. And thank you to everybody who's tuning in. We'll be back with you next month with a new uh, with a new podcast. Until then, keep safe, everyone. Thanks so much.